Hi there guys, got a little video here for you today on the Daystate Delta Wharf and what we're going to be doing in this one is doing it a full disassembly. Before we begin though, I do just want to say that this isn't going to be a tutorial video. I don't recommend you take apart your Delta Wharf. This is more just to have a look at what's inside one. And if you do have a problem with your Daystate Delta Wharf, it's better to contact the manufacturer before you start go poking around inside. As there are some very, very thin little wires in here that can easily be broken. So we can get started. First thing we're going to do is drain the air out. To do that, you loosen the bottle and quickly undo it. It does lose a little bit of air. Not a ton, but a little bit. So get it undone nice and quickly. Take it off. If you look at the back there, I don't know how well the camera is going to pick that up in the back there, but as you can see at the top there, we still have regulator pressure in the rifle and we will need to dry fire that out. So what we're going to do, flick it on fire and just dry fire it in a nice safe direction until the regulator gauge on the back here reads zero. And there we have it, that's all the regulator pressure drained out. With that done, what we'll do now is start taking apart the rifle. I'll start with the areas you're most likely going to need to disassemble for basic maintenance. First thing we'll take off is the barrel. So with a 3mm Allen key in the little grub screw at the back here, just loosen that, and then we can slide the barrel out. And the next thing we're going to do is disconnect the battery. So on the bottom here we pull this little lever, the butt piece slides off, and then the battery's in the back there. I have taken the battery out of this one before, so what I did was I made a little electrical tape tag there so I can just pull the battery and lift it out. Your one is going to be fairly tight in the back here, so what I did to get mine out first was just use a 1.5mm Allen key, hook it in the sides there, rotate it and pull the battery out. So with that out, what we can do now is pull the connection off the battery so that's just that bottom one there and it is the same battery that's fitted to the Red Wolf so if you wanted to you could remove the battery for charging next we'll bring back the barrel and we'll take apart the chronograph assembly so with a 2.5mm allen key I'm just going to take these two grub screws out of the back here like so and then carefully slide the carbon off. There it is there. So there's the chronograph. This is obviously a sub-12 rifle so it has the short barrel. The FAC ones would be a lot longer. But this one is a sub-12. So you may need to get this little chronograph piece off the end here for cleaning of the sensors. So I'll show you how to do that first. First thing we will do using a nice plastic pick or something like that. Just remove the O-rings. And the final one up back here. And just pull that backwards. Next, using your plastic pick again, just gently lift up the chronograph, like so. Pull it back, and now if we needed to, we could clean the little sensors. These are the sensors, so get in there with a nice little Q-tip or something similar. Just give them a little rub up. You should never really need to do that, but lead dust from the actual back venting on the shroud itself may get in here and cause you a little bit of a problem. That being said though, this rifle has shot a few thousand pellets now and the sensors look perfectly clean. With the chronograph section off, push it over to the back there. If we did need to remove this plastic part for any reason we can just unscrew it. And in there you can just see the little clear windows. I've cleaned the front one but I haven't cleaned the back one. So with a cotton bud or something similar you can just clean the clear plastic. And there we have it. Got some, got some lead dust off using the q-tip. You don't have to take it off to clean this, you can just use a cleaning rod in the end there, swirl it around. But it is nice to see the clear windows there. That's pretty much the full disassembly of the chronograph. We could take this back part off if we needed to. 
that would just be with those two grub screws there. But I'm going to leave mine on now as it doesn't really need to come off. There's a thread on the barrel. It is crowned quite nicely, as you can see there hopefully. But for now, I'll just screw that on loosely and stick this assembly to one side. Right then, with the barrel done we can bring back the rifle and we'll start disassembling this. First thing we're going to do is remove the grip to make it a little easier to handle. So to remove the grip we just need to depress this little tag in the bottom there. Pop that out like so. And using a 5mm Allen key go in the base of the grip and remove it. There is a spring underneath the grip so as you're undoing it just be careful that it doesn't ping out. So there's a spring there. There is also a little plunger on this side which we need to remove. So I'm just using an Allen key, this one's slightly magnetic. So there's the little plunger there. If you did want to replace the grip with one of the thicker ones from Ergo or something like that, you do need to make sure that the grip has this little hole for the safety spring. Next we'll take off the bottom plate. And we'll do that using a 3mm Allen key and these four screws here. There's a little plate there. And there's the magnetic cover. Next we'll start taking the top pieces off. So we'll start with the top rail using a 3mm Allen key. Loosen off these four bolts here. And then we can just slide the top rail off. And we'll do the same for the cheek piece. So using a 2.5mm Allen key, loosen these two screws here and remove the cheek piece. Next to remove the cocking handle, so 2.5mm Allen key in the top there. Unscrew that and remove the cocking handle. And then we'll start working on getting this top rail off. So first thing we're going to do is remove the front piece there. That's using a 3mm Allen key. Like so. Now there is a wire behind this so we need to be quite careful. As you can see there, connection at the base there is quite small. So Just gently teasing the connection out. You probably won't be able to see much as it's a very small connection and my fingers are quite large and in the way. But there you go there. So this front connection here is for the chronograph. It's just got a pin connector or pogo connector I think they're called on the front there. And that connection just goes in that. Luckily with the Daystate Delta Wolf all the connections are unique. So you can't get the wiring harnessed the wrong way round or anything like that. But obviously it is fairly important to remember which plug goes where. Next we'll start taking off the top rail. Again using a 3mm Allen key in just all the screws on the top. With all the screws loose we'll take the top piece off nice and gently. There that is there. There is a brass bush for the cocking level so just make sure you don't lose that. And here we have the top of the rifle so we've got an electrical harness at the top there. And we're going to need to remove this to get to some screws below. Nice and carefully we're going to use our plastic pick again. And we're just going to tease up the wires. And just hook them out of the little aluminium channel just to get them out of the way. They do have a little bit of glue in them to keep them in place. And then using a very, very small flathead screwdriver, we're just going to loosen these two bolts here. So one in the middle and one at the front. And just be careful you don't lose the very small screws. 
and there are a couple of spacers beneath them so again just remove them before they become a problem just remove the side plate cover that is if you want to swap the cocking handle over so we'll remove that for now next at the back here we're going to remove this little connection so again very very small connection We're just going to be teasing it out. It's not advised to actually pull on the wires themselves. They are very thin and very fragile. So just gently prise it off there. With that removed, we can remove the whole top section. And just fish the wire through this part here and then pulling the pellet probe back we can lift up this and there we have it so there is a switch on the bottom there just be careful we don't lose that poke the wire through the end there and there that comes there and here we have our cocking lever and our pellet probe if we wanted to get the pellet probe out, all we'd need to do is take a 2mm Allen key here and just loosen that bolt and pull the probe out. I'm going to be leaving mine in for now as I don't need to remove it. And then there's the top rail there. So we've got the cocking arm on this side and the pellet probe carrier on that side. We could disassemble this a little further if we wanted to by taking the pellet probe carrier off, undoing that screw there. And we could also take the cocking linkage off by unscrewing those two bolts there. But I'll stick this to one side. And we'll start disassembling the rest of the rifle. So next we'll remove the electronic part at the back here. And to do that we'll use a 3mm Allen key in this grub screw here. Just loosen it. And then separate the two halves. Nice and gentle. like so. There is a spring behind here so make sure that doesn't ping out and the wiring harness is obviously still attached so just don't move it around too much. Next we're going to undo this screw here that is using a 3mm allen key. Crack that loose. Remove that and that allows the little wiring harness to be unhooked Next we're going to pull this little connection off in the bottom here. To do that, just going to grip the connection nice and firmly. It is a bit tricky to grab a hold of. And then just give it a nice firm pull. That's the electronic heart of the rifle removed. So we'll stick this to one side and I'll disassemble that last. Next we'll remove the trigger. So using a 2mm Allen key, we'll get in the side here. Just remove these four bolts, two on either side. There we have it. Next, what we're going to do is remove this little pressure sensor at the back here. Now, from day state, there is probably a special little tool that they use to remove these nice and easily. However, what I'm going to be using is a very small punch and a little hammer. So. It is slotted, there are two slots in this, and what we're going to do is just gently tap it round. Being awful careful not to hit the wires with the punch or the side of the block. We don't want to damage anything. And then once it gets to a certain point, we should just be able to loosen it with a regular flat bladed screwdriver. Nice and gently pulling out the pressure sensor there. So this is the regulator pressure sensor. We need that out of the way to give us a little extra slack on the wiring. There is an o-ring behind here. So if your rifle is leaking from the grip area, is an o-ring in the base there. 
It's a fairly fat one. I don't have the O-ring sizes unfortunately. They're not available publicly, although I'm sure if you email Daystate they will be happy to sell you a O-ring kit. They do for the Red Wolf and their other rifles, so I can't see why they wouldn't do it for the Delt Wolf. Next, what I'm going to do is gently pull the trigger out. It is a bit tricky, there is a way round it, you sort of have to lift out the front first, then gently pull the back out. Like so. And I'm just feeding in a little wire from the top here just to give me a bit of extra slack. Next what we're going to do is undo these two screws here. And to do that we're just going to use a cross-headed screwdriver. That allows us to pull this little 3D printed cover piece off. So we'll stick this to one side, don't lose the screws. Next what we'll do is just remove the electrical connections. So these are just top mount connections. So what you do is you angle the back out and then they should pop out themselves. And they pull out nice and easily. Next we'll loosen the safety, so these two screws here. So that's our safety. A little safety catch there. There's our trigger unit there. We'll bring this back in a minute. First though we're just going to remove the regulate a pressure sensor nice and carefully just fishing the wire through the back here and it is there and the last thing we can do is just very very gently pull the wiring out the top there it is this plastic piece that which comes out as well and that just guides the wires around the barrel so it's cut out on one side there the wires go around this side so they don't interfere with your barrel. And from the bottom, I'm just going to gently poke the connection through. So there's the block fully relieved of all electronic components. And there is the wiring harness. So this side is the front with both the trigger connection and the chronograph connection on the front there. And at the rear there we have the cocking sensor and the main interface into the bolt. And then we'll bring back the trigger. The last thing we've got to do is remove these two screws here. Again using a cross-headed screwdriver. Tipping out the screws. They are the same as the safety ones on the back so don't worry about getting them mixed up. And there is the trigger unit there. So the trigger depresses on this little switch here. And there's our connections on the top. This is our trigger. And if we remove this pin on the side. That one there. The mechanical part of the trigger falls out. We have a couple of adjustments. At the front there we have our first stage adjustment. This is our trigger weight adjustment and this is our second stage adjustment. There is a final adjustment in the back here which is covered by the blade on my one. That one I think is the stop or the anti over travel and that one is just flush on my one. But I don't think that's a standard adjustment. You just have the first stage at the front, the trigger weight in the middle and the second stage at the back. Next we'll remove the safety. So using a 2mm allen key, we'll remove the safety lever and then the pin itself will fall out. This does have a side to it, so it has a number of detents on this side and that goes corresponds with this hole here. So they line up with that. Next we'll take out the foster fitting on the bottom here and that's using a 10mm deep socket. So crack that loose. So there's the foster fitting there. It does have a one-way valve in the base there. Doubt you wash it to seal it. Again, I'm sure if you buy the full Delta Wolf kit you will get all these O-rings. But there that is there. 
does have a micron filter on the outside there so no debris will get in your gun when you're filling it. Next we'll remove the gauge and on my rifle it's just hand tight. A little gauge with a del ring cover. If we want to we can remove the del ring cover fairly easily. Push the gauge out and then in the base there we do have an o-ring. There's the o-ring. Again I can't give you sizes as they're not publicly available. Right then, the only thing we're not going to be taking off the block is the little bottle adapter there. I've never found anything interesting behind them and if I'm honest they're normally so tight it's not worth the effort to try and get them off. So we're going to be leaving it on. We are however going to be taking out the regulator. Now I'm going to show you an easy way if you don't have any tools to do this sort of thing. Find yourself a couple of drill bits that go in the pin holes nice and tightly. And then if we get a nice thickish allen key in the end there and nice and close to the bottom we can just crack it loose. So that's a very easy and quick way to remove these sort of tight pin fittings. We do have another one on the base which I'll show you I've made a tool for but this one I just wanted to show you how you could do it if you don't have access to a lathe and a miller machine and all that. As this is the regulator and it may need to be served at some point. I believe this is a human regulator in this rifle. So we've unscrewed it enough. Remove the drill bits. and pull the regulator out. And now we can disassemble the regulator. So first thing we're going to do is use a flat bladed screwdriver to remove the adjuster piston. This is a regulator that you can't adjust downwards but you can adjust upwards under pressure that is. So you can't screw it in under pressure but you can screw it out. So there's the top of the adjuster piston there. Typical humour design. The tip on the end here with the corresponding white Delrin, I think it is, or PTFE cup at the bottom. To remove the piston from the bottom here, what we're going to be using is a 4 or M4 screw. Just screw it in the bottom and then pull the piston out. Being awful careful that we don't lose our little sealing puck here. Then we'll take a look at the regulator piston. Two O-rings, one on the front, one on the bottom. And the Belleville washers themselves look like they're cupped in pairs. So two one way, two the other way. With the four in the middle here cupped correspondingly like so. And the last thing we've got to remove from the block is the valve itself. So for the valve here we can't use the drill bit technique as the valve end itself sticks out quite a long way. And if we use two drill bits in the pin holes there and use an allen key all the way up here, we're likely just going to bend our drill bits. We don't want that. So what they did was just made up a little tool. So this tool here is a, just a multi-use tool in which the pins come out and can go in any of the pin holes here to give me different pin spacings. But this one is right for the valve itself. Nice and carefully and align the pins with the holes and then using an adjustable spanner or we could use a 22mm spanner on this flats if we wanted to but I'm going to be using an adjustable we'll just undo the valve. He's fairly stiff as there are two o-rings beneath this so with it mostly loosened we can just do the rest by hand remove the little collar piece and the valve itself comes out with it. Two o-rings, one on the shaft, one on the outside. We'll stick them down there. There's our colour. And this is our valve. So we have the valve pin there. That's the transfer port. It goes up in the rifle. And we have this back piece here which houses the spring. So to remove this it's very easy. We just push it one way and then allow it to rotate round like so. And this is our valve. So there's the valve return spring. 
and there's our knockoff valve seals on that edge in there. So it goes in, seals on that outside edge there. When the hammer hits the valve, it knocks it open and allows air to flow through and through the transfer port. Nice and simple, but now we just have a couple more things to remove in here. So first, just give it a nice sharp tap, we'll remove this little cover plate here. So this is what the spring rides on. And finally, in here is a little pin. So I've got myself some specialised ground down pliers. Just going to grip the pin nice and tightly. Gentle rotation of the valve body and a pull in motion and there we have it. Pin comes out and there is an O-ring in the base there. Feels more plasticky, more hard, so it's obviously a specialised seal of some sort. But we'll stick that down there. And there's the valve fully disassembled. And before we put this away and get the electronic piece out, we'll take a final look over the block itself. Is a very nice block this, I do like this block. Take a look down there. Don't know, you can see a set of sleeves in there that we won't be removing. I can't see any benefit of removing them, but they are in there. There, the block is there. Very nice, all one piece of aluminium. Nicely machined, there's no burrs or anything on, like that on it. And overall, I'm really impressed that this is just the route that Daystate went down. Very nice indeed. Lots of complex machining. Right then, final thing we've got to disassemble is the back half here, or the electronic components. So first thing we're going to do is tip out this little return spring here. Next we'll take the front screen off here using a 2mm Allen key. And then gently lift the screen face up. It is a ribbon connection on here so just be very careful of that. And we're going to remove the ribbon cable by pulling down on these two black parts here. It releases the ribbon and allows the screen to come off as one unit. So I'll get you a close up of the bolt. There's the bolt in the base there. I can't see any reason why you would need to ever take this out, but there, that is there. Very different to the one that's in the Red Wolf. We still have the three capacitors, although there is this expansion on the side here to reduce the overall board size itself. Very clever. I don't really know that much about electronical engineering. It's not my field of interest, and I'm sure a lot of you will know much more than me on this subject. So there that is there. We have the same coil, although a different connector, so we'll remove that next. In the back here we have this piece, and this just acts as a rotating lock, so we'll push it down, give it a nice twist, and that piece there can be pulled out. Next we'll tip the hammer out. So there's the hammer that's in the Delta Wolf. Rather meaty, very heavy. Next, to get the coil out, what I'm going to do is loosen these two screws here. So that one there and that one there. That's using a T4 Torx bit. So nice and careful removal of the screws. I definitely want to be very careful when I'm poking around in here. We don't want to short anything out or anything like that. And next, we're going to remove the coil wires. So these two screws here using a flat bladed screwdriver. We just need to loosen these so the wires themselves can be removed. Using a plastic pick. Remove the coil wires and bend them out the way. With the bolt loose what we can do is gently squeeze the wires through the top here like so. Pull the coil spacer and the coil itself out the back. There's the coil. And there's the cover. So in the rifle that would be assembled like so, with the hammer going up the middle. Next 
step we've got the bolt and when we're removing it we're just going to nice and careful so there we are part of the Delt Wolf probably not many of you have seen before I will say now that these three capacitors here were left overnight to properly discharge after disconnecting the battery. I removed the shroud from the rifle, took apart the chronograph, left the rifle overnight so that these three capacitors could discharge fully. That way the bolt itself should, in theory, be totally dead. It looks like we could pull off this bolt here if we wanted to, but I'm going to leave it as one piece. Definitely don't want to break nothing. Right then guys, now we have it, a fully disassembled Daystate Delta Wolf. So I've laid out all the components so you can see exactly how much goes into this little rifle. I am going to be splitting this video into two parts, first being disassembly and obviously the second being reassembly. But I just wanted to give you an overview and sort of talk a little bit about the parts themselves. So for me personally, I was a little hesitant on the electronic guns when I first saw them. It took me quite a long time to actually get a Red Wolf myself. But now after owning a couple, and having a look at the Delt Wolf itself, I'm very confident in the sort of long-term robustness of the electronic rifles. When you look at them, they look complex with the wiring harnesses and such like that, but when you look closely at them, there's really nothing that can go wrong. The circuit boards look nice and robust, they're properly made, and unless you're actually poking around there with a metal screwdriver or something like that with the battery connected, you're really not going to do any damage to it just by using the rifle or even basic maintenance. The connections are small and a little fiddly, but again, a regular service user needs not touch them, they can just be left completely alone. And then the other parts of the rifle, so the regulator and the valve, very nicely made. Right then, next up I just want to talk about some of the things I like about the rifle. Now that I've taken it apart, the first big one is the block. This being one piece of aluminium provides a tremendous amount of stability to the rifle. I know I keep comparing it to the impact, but I think that's the closest available rifle at the moment. And I prefer this one piece design much over the impact sort of loads of little pieces. On the impact you have all separate little blocks that all work together. And for me that's one of the main weaknesses of the impact itself. The chassis of the rifle isn't fixed. It's all bits screwed together that can move when the rifle's in use. The Delta Wolf, however, has no such problem as it's all one piece of aluminium. The next thing I really like is the full-sized humor reg. Nice and robust, nice and big, and it's nice and consistent over the chronograph. And when we're looking on the screen for the refresh rate of the regulator and the settle pressure, it's nice and consistent. And from a sort of a technical standpoint, there's not much here that I can see that I don't like. I can't really point out any faults in anything. You could argue that the hammer is a little heavy for sub-12 rifles. It is 36 grams, so it's a little on the heavy side for a sub-12 rifle. But apart from that, there's really nothing in the rifle that I can point to and say, no, I really don't like that or anything like that. Everything seems to work well. I suppose the only niggly point is that the pin in the bottle here is a bit too long, so you lose some air once you take it off. But it does seal up nicely, so the amount of air you actually lose is minimal. Right then, guys, so that's the full disassembly. In the next part, we'll do a full rebuild, and I'll point out some little things you can do. So we'll swap the cocking handle over, I'll swap out the grip, and I'll just talk through a full reassembly. But for now, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.